keep it clean we got some big updates to talk about with our baltimore ravens before we get into it make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video my apologies that this is coming so late i've been in and out of sleep all day still not feeling the best feel like it's like at a weird stage where i feel better but still got some annoying symptoms and just been tired still but we're gonna get through this thing one way or another so i, I appreciate y'all being so patient and nobody complaining nobody being like oh where is it so i, I appreciate y'all big time now um speaking of big derrick henry um derrick henry had his introductory press conference today and really uh the biggest thing that i got from it um was that he don't really feel like doing all this talking he just seemed like he just he just want to get the plan and he's going to let his plan do the talking for him. Because there are some times when you can hear a presser from a player and they do do a lot of talking. They, they, and he answered all the questions and whatnot. He was respectful. He had some fun with it too. But it just seemed like he didn't even feel like talking. He just want to put the pads on and just roll with it. Um, I also liked how he didn't want to uh, set any expectations um, as far as because they asked him about, oh, so with you and Lamar Jackson, how's it going to be back there? He was like, no, I'm not, I'm not setting any expectations uh, with anything. Um, now, something that's uh, which a lot of fans do appreciate was the jersey number. What number uh, jersey was Derrick Henry going to wear? And he is getting that number 22. So I guess with Pepe Williams, uh, he must have cut him a check or something. Uh, but I saw somebody on Twitter. Um, they responded to me and they were like, oh, no, he ain't cut Pepe Williams no check. He just gave him a look. And that's all he had to do. And Pepe Williams was like, okay, the number's all yours. I wouldn't, I don't think that's too far fetched. But Derrick Henry will be wearing uh, the number 22. Now, uh, when he first, when they first started the presser, um, you know, him, Eric DaCosta, John Harbaugh, they stood in front of the podium. Uh, and I was like, man, Derrick Henry, that, that purple suit is clean. It is nice, man. Because it was. It was really, really nice. I'm like, all right, I need to get me one like that, too. Um, and I thought that he was just wearing that because, I mean, hey, he is going to a team that's purple. It's the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but it was deeper than that. Um, Derrick Henry said that that was a suit that he wore at his grandmother's funeral. Um and he said, uh, whew, he said the purple was her favorite color. So I, I thought that was really, really, really nice. And then he, he got me thinking about my grandmother who passed some years back. And um, just really got me in, in, in my feelings a little bit about that, man. So that, that was just really, really nice to, uh, to see that from Derrick Henry. Um, and just to, to know the, the, the deeper meaning and the, the story behind that purple suit. And also what he talked about with the butterflies uh, as well. So... That was neat. So shout out to Derrick Henry. Um, he is officially official uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, uh, and it's going to be fun watching him. Now, um, his partner in crime will soon to be, hopefully soon to be partner in crime uh, at the running back position with the Ravens is going to be Keaton Mitchell. And somebody asked Eric DaCosta what the status uh, of Keaton Mitchell was, and I was like, oh, man, that's a really good question because we haven't heard anything. And I was hoping that we would get a definitive answer, but we really didn't. And I get it, though. Uh, Eric DaCosta said that hopefully Keaton Mitchell will be able to join the Baltimore Ravens uh, sometime this season. But he didn't give any clear-cut answer on it. He said once they have something, then, of course, they'll let us know or whatever. But he didn't give us any um, any clear answer on anything. And I, and I think it, that's because the injury happened so late in the year. It was a significant injury, and those things take a while to come back from. So we'll see. It's just one of those things we're going to have to wait it out and see. Keaton Mitchell, oh, man, he – um. He was just great, man. He was great. He was so much fun. He just brought a new life to the Baltimore Ravens offense and just, oh, man, it was great. I was so sad when he got hurt. I was so sad, man, because there was no replacing that on the Baltimore Ravens. You could not replace Keaton Mitchell. You have different running backs that could do different things for sure, but there was no replacing Keaton Mitchell. So um, I'm sure with the running back situation, you got Derrick Henry. Uh, Eric DeCosta talked about Justice Hill, of course, being one of the unsung heroes of last year. Um and yeah, so I, I know they're not done. Whether they attack it via the draft, whether they sign another player, uh, they're not gonna be done at the running back position. So it's all about staying ready, so you don't gotta get ready. So we'll see um how the Baltimore Ravens address that. Um, EDC also talks about the report about Devo Samuel. Uh, I think it was Jeff Zrebic that asked, was there any valid validity to that report? And EDC said that um, he was at a school and he read the Lorax last week and he likened the report to that. Now, can y'all explain it? I, I didn't. It sounded like he was shutting it down, but I didn't understand what the correlation was to the Lorax and or him reading the, the Lorax at the school to the Jason Lockham for a report. I know they got this ongoing beef that's been happening for years, but I, I, I didn't understand like what the correlation was. 
Um, and I was thinking, like, I was thinking at the same time, well, I know Jason Lockham Ford does not have a good rep with the Baltimore Ravens, does not have a good rep in a lot of just Baltimore sports in general. But even if the report was true, would Eric DaCosta come out and say, oh, yeah, yeah, we were talking to the 49ers about Debo Samuel? No, he wouldn't. He would, he would not do that. So whether the report was true, whether the report was a lie, uh, I don't know what it was. I know everybody's like, oh, since it came from JLC, then it's false. Because uh, everybody, I saw everybody pulling up the whole thing with uh, with Zach Orr. When Zach Orr was expected to have a big press conference, Ravens was expected to have a big press conference for, for Zach Orr back in uh, 2017 or 2018, I think 2017. And Jason Lockham Ford was like, oh, it's for a contract extension when it ended up really being for him retiring. Um, but whether it's true or not, uh, Eric DaCosta is not going to come out and say Oh yeah 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 we've been talking to Debo Samuel We've been talking to the 49ers about him But that's just something to think about But I mean we'll see eventually Now um, something that we did expect to happen uh, That did happen uh, Was for Odell Beckham Jr. to be released He is now a free agent And he can go sign wherever he wants to uh, Odell Beckham Jr. was released as a post-June 1st uh, release So now he if he signs somewhere else he will not count against the comp pick formula. He is good to go. Um, and it was fun. Yeah, OBJ brought some nice moments to the Baltimore Ravens, brought some nice leadership. He made some plays here and there. Um, but the thing like we talked about, he just he was never healthy. Uh, and there was never an expectation that he was ever going to be fully healthy. We had hoped that he would, but didn't expect him to be. And he never was uh, throughout this entire season. Now you just hope for his sake that uh, when he does – well, whatever his next team is, <clears throat> and I think it may be a little bit, a little while before he gets signed. But whoever his next team is, you just hope that he can be healthy and stay healthy, because that's the biggest concern with OBJ. He can still run, he can still do his routes, he can still catch the ball, he can still do all that stuff. But the health is a big concern, and I don't see a team paying him fifteen million dollars this year. I don't see them paying paying him a deal that could be worth up to eighteen million dollars. I just don't see that happening this year. I think the most that Odell Beckham Jr. would get this year may be like $10, $11 million. But we'll see. We'll see. Because sometimes stuff can change and the team could be like, hey, we got it, so we're going to spend it. So we'll see what happens with Odell. Um, I, I don't think this was a um, – I wouldn't call it a failed experiment with Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, because Odell Beckham Jr., he was a piece to bring Lamar Jackson back. Because Lamar Jackson, he wanted Odell Beckham Jr. He wanted DeAndre Hopkins too. Uh, so the Ravens got Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, during the time when Lamar wanted both of those guys, and he mentioned both of those guys, DeAndre Hopkins was still under contract with the Cardinals at the time. And they were talking about trading him somewhere, but they didn't end up trading him anywhere. They ended up cutting him, and then boom. Now, but that was way after the fact. So the Ravens were able to get Odell, obviously, and that helped secure the deal with Lamar Jackson. So Odell was a necessary piece. Uh, and the, the, greater, uh, the greater task was accomplished um, and getting Lamar Jackson signed. Uh, so shout out to Odell, man. He 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 was fun, and he really embraced Baltimore as a city. Uh, he embraced the team for sure. He, he was fun, man. He was fun, very supportive teammate, um, and he just wanted to win. And he helped with the Ravens winning. Uh, he helped the other wide receivers and whatnot, and um, it was a good time. It was a good time, but now that time is officially over somebody else's whose time is not necessarily officially over but it could be soon with the baltimore ravens that is tyler huntley tyler huntley uh he is talking to the philadelphia eagles uh for a possible backup role behind jalen hurts so that would be something i did see somebody say uh on twitter that um eagles do not trust tyler huntley with the tush push i said why y'all gotta do hunt like that hunt ain't do none of nobody man but um yeah, so I hope he does get that job. I hope he gets that job, and then I hope that uh, Jalen Hurts and them Eagles, they could blow some teams out the water, and then they be like, all right, Tyler Huntley, go do your thing. And he can go in there, get some passes in, get some throws in, and show like, hey, I, I can play. I was hoping that he would – Um, and it's tough. It's tough out here. Uh, but I was hoping that he could get an opportunity somewhere to, like, actually play play. I knew it was going to be really, really, really tough. Um, But it's not going to happen yet. And speaking of backup quarterbacks, uh, Josh Johnson – uh, he signed a one-year deal to come back to the Baltimore Ravens again for time number one, two, three, four. So Josh Johnson is back. So the quarterbacks are obviously Lamar Jackson, Josh Johnson, and Malik Cunningham. So I guess they wanted somebody who really has some experience still uh, behind Lamar Jackson and then Malik Cunningham, somebody who they can build up into a backup quarterback. So 
they just playing an extra safe there at the backup QB role. Now, familiar faces in Pittsburgh, of course. Uh, this has been this has been a fun offseason so far, and it's only been a couple of days. But we've had Geno Stone go to the Bengals. We've had Patrick Queen. Uh, he went to the Steelers. And we've seen other players from other teams like sign, like Saquon Barkley. He went from the Giants to the Eagles. We've seen other players stay in the division. And I love it. I, I love it because that makes the games more personal. That brings some more animosity out of the games. Uh, and in Pittsburgh, they were like, oh, oh y'all signing Derrick Henry, huh? Okay, we got something for that. And Pittsburgh Steelers signed Deshaun Elliott. Former Baltimore Raven, former Miami Dolphin, former Detroit Lion. But he started with the Baltimore Ravens. We had him first. And he was somebody that was not afraid to go head up with Derrick Henry. Uh, I'll never forget. Um, so they got him. They got him. So that, that should be fun. That add a little extra spice to these Baltimore Ravens and uh, Steelers games. So hopefully that rivalry can be reignited. Cause again, that that flame been burnt out for a long time, and and, and not like I saw somebody in the comment section when I said that the other day. I saw somebody in the comment se section say, "Oh, that's because the the Steelers been beating y'all, and it's like the Ravens are one and seven versus the Steelers since 2020." I said, that's, "It's not even that. It's it's just there's not like it's been a mix of things. There've there been a lot of games where Lamar hasn't played against the Steelers, but it's just it just hasn't been the same. It's like it's not not what it used to be." You you don't care about it like you used to. We of course still want the win, but it's just it just ain't been the same way. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens very, very soon. Um, Brent Urban. Brent Urban, he is back with the Baltimore Ravens. They re-signed him so we get to see the celebration again from Brent Urban. Um, so that that's gonna be nice to have him. And and he's always been a solid dead piece for the Baltimore Ravens, so shout out to him. And Hollywood. Hollywood Brown, there have been a lot of Ravens fans. A lot of them want Hollywood Brown back. A lot of them don't want Hollywood Brown back. Um, but to each his own, everybody got their own opinion on it, which is fine. But according to all the rumors that have been circulating recently, uh, Hollywood Brown, uh, there are a lot of rumors that are saying that he could be headed to Kansas City. And ooh, man. That would be that'd be something. That'd be a lot of fun to watch Hollywood with Patrick Mahomes. Now look, Hollywood, um, it ain't gonna be nothing personal, but um, I said this yesterday on Twitter that Baltimore Ravens got to play the Chiefs twice this year. They got to. I, I don't. Well, not that I don't care how the first game goes, but that second game, AFC Championship, it got to be like Ravens got to play the Chiefs this year twice and take care of business in that AFC Championship game this time. Um, so Hollywood, whether you there or not, like don't take it personal, but. This is personal for us. We, we, we got a mission. We got to take care of business. And we got to finish what we started last year. But for a lot of different reasons, we obviously didn't get the job done. So could Hollywood end up playing with, K uh, with Casey or Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice and all of them? Hey, we're going to see soon enough. But until then... We'll just keep on waiting. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single update on these Baltimore Ravens or really just anything else going on uh, around the, a the NFL, especially the AFC North. But I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.